could you could you give us some more details about what exactly are the tourist rest areas, and um, what uh, what do you hope to achieve with those? So basically, the tourist rest areas are halfway. Uh, areas where you travel or along different regions and we noticed that especially for motorcycle bike riders and for others here in Luzon they would like to travel by car and there are not a lot of stopovers so the tourist rest areas is really intended for you to have clean bathrooms number one and to also have a tourist information center and also a Pasalubong Center where you can buy local products and artisanal products coming from the region. What about job opportunities for areas outside the metros? Uh, is there a program in the works for that? We are currently working with our ASEAN neighbors actually um, to come up and strengthen a program for all of our potential OFW workers. Um, we know that the Filipino workers are very valued and one of um, our driving forces really for our economy. So this is something that the Secretary is currently working on and we should be launching that program soon. Secretary Pascual, maybe I can ask your advice because how can we retool even the, I guess, the, the, the children or the college education? Maybe you can share what you can, what, how, how we can achieve that, getting the agencies together and the, uh, the, the education. So, yeah. <clears throat> There is a lot of coordination that uh, has to be done with other agencies. With the uh, DPWAs, for example, we have a convergence program called Roll It, where they, they hold the funds and do the work, but we direct them to uh, which place they should uh, build a farm-to-market road, for example. With the uh, DITC, DICT, the Department of Information and Communication Technology, we are partnering in putting up the e-commerce platform and uh, they're a partner also in uh, helping us uh, digitalize the operations of DDI as they are uh, doing the same for other agencies of the government. Uh, when we go to LGU digitalization, for example, we can provide the perspective from the client side, you know, the businesses that deal with LGUs. I, I have uh, coordinated with CHED, with uh, the Department of Education with respect to uh, the, develop the, the development of the appropriate curriculum for uh, producing the skills that uh, the new industries were uh, trying to develop in this uh, country. Um, it, are, there any, are there any new trade agreements in the works right now uh, beyond what we already know about? There is one uh, FTA that uh, I hope we will uh, sign uh, next month, and that's with uh, Korea. In my uh, first interaction with uh, the U.S. Uh, colleagues, uh, we were talking about the new one of our GSP. I told them we have to go beyond GSP and start uh, negotiating an FTA. Same with EU. I'm going to Brussels uh, next week. Of course, we will initially work uh, for the... Uh, coverage again of the Philippines uh, by their uh, GSP Plus, uh, the last round of which, I think it was the second, was a few years back in 2015. And since then, there has been no uh, discussion. Uh, there are other countries in the lineup, rest assured. Secretary, is RCEP going to be signed also, the regional cooperation, the RCEP? What is the status? Ah, RCEP. Okay, yeah, RCEP is very important. I've met with a number of prospective investors. One of the first questions they ask is, uh, when are we going to be part of RCEP? Because most of the investors coming to the Philippines are not, uh, are of course, looking at the domestic market, but they're here to really serve uh, export markets, the bigger, the bigger uh, potential. We are supportive of RCEP. The current administration supports RCEP. We are going to work on uh, the Senate, get this, ratified. Uh, do, have you gotten any sense from the Senate? Yeah, we are aware of uh, the sources of their discomfort, maybe elaborating further that there is no cause for concern. Uh, have you reached a point yet where you've identified uh, regions and you know, specialties that would go along with those regions that can, they can start working on? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be called tomorrow and spend uh, two days 
two days there. Uh, one example there is abaka. Abaka is a very important raw material, but we're not uh, fully ex exploring and or exploiting the value that abaka could have. Abaka. Then they have pili, they have coconut. One uh, factory I'm going to visit the ceramics industry in uh, Albay, and I'm handing a check to them for a few million pesos, you know, uh, from DTI so they can improve their process. We're, we're trying to develop uh, what we may call industry clusters, like a coffee cluster, a cacao cluster for chocolate. Can DTI and Department of Tourism get together on that, you know, and market that? It would be to your mutual benefit, and it would be great for the visitors. And the reason I ask is because DTI, of course, his whole thing set up, they're there. I don't see anything about the Department of Tourism when I go there. There's one way that you could work together easily without inventing anything new. Yep, yep, yep. And it would, it would be a benefit to everyone. To add to that, the DOT Region 5 was actually there in that fair. Um, maybe I have to have a word with the regional director since they're not very noticeable. We are moving forward. We have focused on those things. Um, and that is why we have started breaking ground on the tourist rest areas. We promised to break ground 10 tourist areas across the Philippines this year. We've just recently broken ground on four, which is one in Manolo Fortich in Bukidnon, two in Cebu, two towns in Cebu, and one in Samal Island in Davao. And there are six more to be broken ground in Ilocos Norte, Palawan, Baguio, and so on. And I also want to point out that in the tourism circuits program that we are currently updating and upgrading, we intend to make sure that the heritage and cultural hubs and caravans will also be highlighted in those. And the purpose of this is really to also encourage international visitors and even local uh, tourists to spend more time in the region, to go around, to get out of the beach, and also look around on the different churches that are there, lesser known tourist destinations and smaller municipalities. And these are the things that we are currently in conversations with, um, with our local government units, and also with DTI. So we're very hopeful. Baby steps, but we're there. We're rolling out programs as we speak. Right. One, one of the activities I will have is to meet the regional directors of the different departments. And I'd like to see, you know, whether they are working together, and if not, how we can bring them together, and probably not duplicate uh, each other's uh, activity. The OST also uh, is putting up, the Department of Science Technology is putting up their own regional innovation center. I will propose to them so that uh, we will not be in conflict. Let's lodge this center in a selected university. Just provide support, you know, to that university. If I heard it correctly, 1.77 million tourists. Can you elaborate on that and what percent are, are, are you counting local there or is that just foreign? That is international, international tourist arrivals. We, exceed, we exceeded already the full year target yes. for six months? Um, actually, pre-pandemic in 2019, we had like around 8 million tourist arrivals and we're just at 1.7. But we are hopeful that it's a slow and steady recovery, especially since we have already opened up our borders. And October to December is essentially the peak months, really, of international arrivals. So that's good news for us. What else can we do or can the people here do to help you promote or maybe is the low-hanging fruit the local tourism and what can we do or what are the things that can be done so that is that can help you with your target? What we would like to do really and we have already spoken with the president about this is to consider bringing back the holiday economics maybe so that there are more longer um, long weekends. I know maybe some of the companies may have an opinion on this but this is something that he is considering, um, just so we can also encourage many of our fellow Filipinos to have more experiences around the Philippines. We, are, we have a very positive outlook for the Philippines, and Secretary Frasco, you know, being a local chief executive, really wants to have more tangible projects that um, tourists can see, focus more on enhancing the overall tourist experience, and really to have more immersive tourist experiences and programs. And I think that this is something to watch out for. And um, yeah, she's very hardworking and you can expect so much more from her. Thank you. We are really relying on the private sector. The government is there 
just to provide support and uh, create the enabling conditions. And uh, I would uh, really rely on the dynamism of our uh, private citizens or private companies uh, to, to drive the development of the economy and to, to introduce innovation. Thank you very much, UT Undersecretary Pamintuan and UTI Secretary Pascual.